Okay, we're going to start. Thank you for joining me and my Senate colleagues on this very beautiful day. We are here today with a broad, diverse coalition of supporters. Business, labor, consumer and environmental groups, health advocates, all united for one cause, to make sure California keeps leading in building the new economy of tomorrow. The legislation we are announcing today puts in place standards, standards that will spur innovation, empower a sustainable future for the Golden State. My Senate colleagues and I have seen clean energy jobs growing across California, and we want to make sure they reach every single district, especially the most hard hit areas in California, the Central Valley, Inland Empire, and other areas very similar that are still recovering from the Great Recession of 1929. We just passed Brazil to become the seventh largest economy in the world. And now is the time to keep the momentum going. Clean tech companies in California are creating more jobs and are investing more money than competitors in any other state. We need to pursue policies that build on this economic growth by strengthening incentives for energy efficiency and clean technology. The Golden State Standards, 50% less petroleum use, 50% electricity coming from renewable sources, and 50% better energy efficiency in our buildings. These all send a very strong message, a strong signal to California businesses, and leaves no doubt in the direction we're heading in. We need to move the state away from fossil fuels and free consumers from the grip of oil prices. Now, let's take a look at Kern County. Kern is the largest oil county in the state of California. It's the largest producing county, perhaps maybe in the entire country. But its residents constantly face economic uncertainty. When gas prices rise, residents statewide feel the pain at the pump. Now, when gas prices fall, residents in Kern are laid off. As a result of current low prices, the county has declared a fiscal emergency with poverty and unemployment rates that are much way too high. In fact, the air quality in Kern County is among the worst in the country. The fact is, an economy built on fossil fuels is an economy built on shifting sands. The growth of renewable energy now in Kern County is providing a much different, a much brighter picture. Kern is home to the largest wind power farm in the nation, the Alta Wind Energy Center at the Tehachapi Pass. A group of projects in Kern County alone, wind projects, contributes more than $1.2 billion to the Kern County economy. These projects create jobs here, bring revenue here, and they aren't going anywhere. Like Kern County, California needs stable economic footing. We need a clear and coherent strategy to improve our long-term economic growth. Oil and gas can only take us so far. Choosing between, climate, choosing between climate change policies and policies that build economic growth is a false choice. California has proven that we can create jobs lower utility bills, rebuild our infrastructure while cleaning up the air, the breathe, the air that we breathe into our lungs. Bottom line is common sense, sensible climate change policy is economic growth policy for the state of California. California shows the world how the future works and they are watching what we do on climate policies very, very closely. With this package today, California will remain at the forefront of climate leadership. Hoy día presentamos un paquete de proyectos de ley para contrarrestar el alto índice alarmante y peligroso de carbono en nuestro medio ambiente y al mismo tiempo crear trabajos, trabajos concretos y trabajos fijos para ayudar a las familias de California a lo largo y ancho del estado de California. Queremos generar trabajos y limpiar el aire para que nuestros hijos respiren aire puro y aire limpio. 
Queremos poner a la gente a trabajar, no dañarlos. De hecho, el Valle Central sufre actualmente. Hay escasez de agua y para los trabajadores agrícolas son muy afectados, sin trabajo. Estos se traducen en altos costos de frutas y verduras en el oeste de Los Ángeles, en San Francisco, en San José, en San Diego, en fin, en todo el estado de California. Y la gente, la familia trabajadora pagarán más de su bolsillo para las frutas y verduras. Por eso presentamos un paquete muy sencillo, pero muy directo. Queremos generar más trabajos para la gente trabajadora y queremos limpiar nuestro aire aquí en el estado de California. Now, I have a quick statement from Senator uh, Fran Pavley, who is the author of Senate Bill 32. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she was very delayed because her flight was canceled and she really wanted to be here with us today. Statement from Senator Fran Pavley. I'm sorry that my flight was canceled and that I will miss this historic press conference. I spoke this morning to approximately 300 top automotive engineers from around the world who have already shown climate leadership by creating cleaner, more fuel efficient automobiles that save consumers money, clean up our air and reduce our petroleum dependence. We must send a strong signal to the businesses with hundreds of thousands of employees like those who are already investing in job creation through pollution reduction that the state will stand with you and continue our long-term economic growth. Building on, the success, building on the success of our existing policies will create even more jobs and save families and businesses money on their energy and fuel bills, while also reducing pollution to ensure a cleaner and healthy environment for all. I look forward to working with the Senate Pro Tem, De Leon, the Governor, and other members of the legislature to meet the long-term targets of SB 32 post-2020 and the policy goals stated in SB 350 to increase the new 21st century jobs in California. Now, before we go to Senator Mark Leno, and that's a statement from Senator Fran Pavley, just very quickly. Uh, so for those in the media, I want to make sure that you know uh, we go to Q&A or after the Q&A, if you want one-on-ones, we have a, a, a wide selection of folks from business, from labor, uh, from health and environmental groups here today. With us today, you guys can raise your hands. The apprentices from the building trades in the state of California. Yeah. Folks are here today. Let's give it up. Yeah. We have with us the Sacramento and Fresno Conservation Corps. We have workers from Solar City and Sun Power. We got a lot of folks, so I'm going to go through this quickly. We got eBay, David London, we got the American Lung Association, we've got the Valley Clean Air Now, California Solar Energy Industries Association, the Center on Race, Poverty, and the Environment, the Asian Pacific Environmental Network, APEN, the Coalition for Clean Air, the Union of Concerned Scientists, Natural Resources Defense Council, the U.S. Green Building Council, California, EDF, the Environmental Defense Fund, the California Environmental Justice Alliance, the Sierra Club, the Natural Conservancy of California, Cal Start, Sun Edison, Grid Alternatives, the Center for Sustainable Energy, Clear Result, the California Electric Transportation Coalition, Turn, the Utility Reform Network, Audubon, California, the California Energy Efficiency Industry Council, and Distinguished Outreach Services. So with that, it's uh, my great pleasure. Oh, CalPRIG students, climate parents, and last but not least, recurrent energy. Let's give a hand for everyone together. <laughs> so it's my distinct pleasure to bring up uh, our chair of the Senate Budget Committee uh, that is with us today. That is Senator Mark Leno. So first of all, my thanks to Pro Tem de Leon for assembling all of us in the long list of coalition partners in what is really a historic occasion. Also, let me personally thank Senator Fran Pavley, who had a vision way back in 2006, which is still being implemented and manifested by our efforts today. It was about 15 years ago when I was yet on the County Board of Supervisors when we were able to place before the San Francisco voters something called Prop B, which was the first 
of its kind in the nation, a $100 million solar revenue bond. The idea was to create a funding source to put solar panels on as many county-owned rooftops as possible, our hospitals, our schools, our jails, our airport. The idea being to exponentially increase the demand for PV technology, which would subsequently drive down the cost equally, helping to bring us to a renewably fueled 21st century. It is now happening. It was in that same year, 2000, that Senator Byron Schur authored the first renewable portfolio standard. And it was then set at 20%. Well, we quickly reached that, thanks to Senator Joe Simidian and others. We increased it to 33% due by 2020. And now contracts are already in place to meet that goal. So today with our 50-50-50 bill, which I'm joined authoring with Senator DeLeon, uh, we're going to increase that to 50% by 2030. And we don't have all the answers here today, and we didn't have all the answers when we set out with 20 percent or with 30 percent, 33 percent. But through the process, we get there. We know we have to get there. But the even more exciting news is that by doing so, we are creating hundreds and have created hundreds of thousands of new jobs, quality jobs. We have brought over $7 billion of investment. That's just the solar tip of the iceberg, not to mention the wind and the geothermal and the other diverse parts of our renewable portfolio. And we're cleaning the air, improving the quality of life and breathing for Californians and doing our part, in fact, leading not just the nation, but the world in dealing with climate change. So this is extraordinary what we're doing. Who could have imagined 15 years ago that we would even be there? I will spare you all the additional numbers. The facts are there. This is great for the economy. It's created, as we speak, quality jobs throughout the state. Again, with the reduction in petroleum use, we know we have to deal with it. It represents somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of all of our greenhouse gas emissions, 80 percent of smog-forming pollution, over 95 percent of cancer-causing diesel particulate matter. We have to deal with lowering petroleum use and increasing energy efficiency as a part of any renewable effort. And so I am really excited to be joint author with Senator DeLeon on this and the part of this package. I thank you very much. And our next author is Senator Ben Hueso. Thank you, and good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to be here as the chair of the Senate Energy, Utilities, and Communications Committee. We are here working hard to usher in the new gold rush, the California gold rush of the modern era. Because in California, there's gold in the wind, there's go gold in the sunlight, there is gold in, in the water, there's gold in geothermal activity. And we're going to bring people from all over the world to continue to invest in California to make sure that dream continues in California of, of, of polishing the Golden State. I am introducing Bill 189, which will, which will establish the Committee on Maximizing Jobs and Economic Growth. This bill will tap into California's leading, leading minds. The leading innovators of our state will be uh, uh, put together in a, in a think tank of, store, of sorts, a, a state-sanctioned think tank to uh, assist in creating jobs through environmental stewardship. State departments and policymakers can then evaluate the policies that we approve and their uh, corresponding impact on economic development and how it maximizes economic growth. Uh, th this will be a group that will be independent and will have the opportunity to provide advice to, to legislators and policymakers across the state on how to best create jobs while we attempt to take care of our Mother Earth. This bill will not only result in significant environmental and public health benefits to Californians, but it will also ensure that job creation is at the forefront of every dis discussion. I'm proud to stand here today working with my colleagues to pave the way for a better and cleaner future for all of California. Thank you. I also want to introduce Senator Bob Wilkowski. Thank you, Ben. 
Uh, good afternoon, and I'm thank you Pro Tem for uh, having this wonderful press conference. And I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues as California takes the next step in combating uh, climate change and also showing the world that California is going to remain the leader uh, in reducing greenhouse gases. Now. In my district, we're experiencing tremendous job growth in general, but in the clean tech sector, we are the leaders in California. I have, I enjoy having 5,000 clean tech jobs today in my district, and the number of these com companies are focusing on energy efficiency, energy uh, storage, and solar energy, and many of them in the town that I'm from, Fremont, they. 30 companies are now located in them. And these innovative companies are proving that we can grow the economy and improve our environment at the same time. Oh, did I mention that Tesla has is located in Fremont in my district? They have 6,000 jobs statewide, but since 2012, they've doubled the amount of jobs that they have uh, in California. So as my colleagues have said, for those of us who value fresh air and good health and cleaner envi environment, there's no turning back now. We're gonna we're gonna move forward. Now, um, I'm the chairman of the Environmental uh, uh, Quality Committee, um, and as part of uh, my oversight hearings, we're gonna have a series of oversight hearings starting off on February 25th, and we're gonna be looking at the area of climate adaptation. And the governor just released in his budget that we need to. Infrastructure backlog is $59, $66 billion. We have hundreds of billions of dollars in infrastructure that are threatened because of the impacts of, uh, of global warming. So we're going to look at the state's agencies on what we're doing comprehensively and coordinate it to develop a plan. I, pl I will be introducing legislation that addresses that. We need to be resilient. We are resilient, but we need to be more resilient. We need to understand these impacts that are of extreme weather that are going to affect the sea level rising, that's going to affect our water quality, our air quality, um, and our public health. Californians and California policy makers are here today to let the world know that we are adapting and putting plans together today so we can prepare for tomorrow. I thank everybody for being here. I look forward to the hearings in this area and moving this legislation uh, into law. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Wachowski. Uh, before I introduce our next guest, I want to uh, officially recognize a few of our colleagues uh, who have joined us here today. Uh, to my left, uh, we have Senator uh, Connie Leva. So. We also have Senator Benjamin Allen with us right there. <laughs> And to my right, uh, uh, n only literally, not figuratively, you know, to my right we have Senator Hannah Beth Jackson with us today. <laughs> and we also have Senator Mike McGuire with us as well, too. I want to give a very special recognition, a uh, very special recognition uh, of a colleague who's joined us from the green carpet. And he will also play a, a big, vital role in this policy debate. Uh, I, we're looking forward to joining with him and collaborating, cooperating together. That is the, the new chair of the Utilities and Communications UNC uh, of the Assembly. That is uh, Assembly Member Anthony Rendon, the chair. Okay. <laughs> Next uh, is Mr. Craig uh, Lemessure, uh, Lemessure, I should say, from KB Homes of California. Thank you, Senator. On behalf of KB Home, I'd like to thank you and the state of California for helping to reduce the cost of clean energy sources such as solar power. Four years ago, KB Home made the commitment to include solar power on every new single family home we had in Southern California. Since that time, we've expanded the program to communities across the state. And with our partner, SunPower, we've now built close to 4,000 solar powered homes in the state of California. This program has created jobs, it's significantly reduced our homeowners' carbon footprint, and more importantly, it saved our homeowners millions of dollars in utility bills. So we thank you, and thank you for your commitment to the home building industry, and helping you reduce the overall cost of home ownership. Thank you.
Thank you so very much, uh, Craig. We just have a couple more uh, speakers uh, who will uh, just give a few brief remarks, and then we'll go to a Q&A. Uh, we have us uh, uh, who's come up all the way from Southern California, from Los Angeles. We have Mary Leslie, who is the president of the Los Angeles Business Council. Mary. Hi. I'm proud to be here on behalf of over 500 Los Angeles businesses and job creators who are part of the LA Business Council. We have long recognized when it comes to climate change that the economic costs of alternative energy and sustainable principles far outweigh the cost of doing nothing. Congratulations to the Senate leadership, Senate Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon and his leadership team for this new framework of bills that you're proposing. When coupled with the governor's climate commitment, we're charting a new course that will strengthen California's global leadership in meeting the climate challenge. Importantly, these efforts create jobs, good, skilled jobs. Investments in clean energy produce two to three times as many jobs as gas, oil, or coal. And dollars invested in clean energy tend to stay in California instead of leaving the state. Clean energy jobs and businesses have grown much faster than the economy as a whole in the past 15 years in good and bad times. For the last 12 years, the Los Angeles Business Council has a mission to promote economic and environmental sustainability to advance LA's economy and protect the environment. In 2010, we released a report together with UCLA that designed and priced a feed-in tariff for Los Angeles. This modest program recommended 600 megawatts of local solar on commercial and residential rooftops that generated that would generate close to two billion in local investment, create thousands of jobs, and reduce nine million metric tons of CO2. In 2013, the LA Department of Water and Power adopted a 150 megawatt program, a feed and tariff program or FIT program. To date, 125 megawatts of this program have rolled out successfully, creating new jobs and businesses in LA. DWP is now planning to expand that program to 450 megawatts by 2020. Together with UCLA and USC, they have reviewed this program for the social equity and job creation impacts. The report finds that a significantly expanded solar rooftop program in LA creates thousands of new jobs, spurs hundreds of millions of dollars in new investment, and in particular, benefits residents living in traditionally underserved communities. USC found that over 43% of the solar rooftop projects are in low-income neighborhoods. California leads the nation in solar job creation with over 47,000 new workers, accounting for about one-third of the nation's total solar industry. Across the state, job growth in the solar sector was 8.1%. The overall growth rate in the state was 1.7%. Creating a vibrant California economy will depend on implementing smart, far-sighted far policies to confront the crisis of climate change and strengthen California's renewable energy markets. The legislation being unveiled today aligns closely with the goals of our organization to promote sustainability, create long-term jobs for the future, ensure all communities share in these benefits. So on behalf of the LABC, we are here to work with you, Senator De Leon, and your, your leadership and the governor to move forward. Thank you. We have a couple more folks we have from BYD Motors. That is Mr. James Holtz. Mr. James Holtz. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak today. Tackling climate change is one of California's greatest economic opportunities of the 21st century. And thanks to Senator DeLeon and your esteemed colleagues, we may very well be on our way. The jobs created by California organizations such as BYD uh, Bus and Coach will reach into the thousands and will have ripple effects throughout the great nation as allied industries and sub-suppliers feel the positive impact of growing demand. Our collective green dream should encompass harnessing the abundant sun for, which provides us free energy and it's, it's in using more efficient solar panels and storing that energy in ever increasing battery technology that is safe, non-toxic and not in any kind of way, any kind of environmental impact. We can use that energy to charge our zero emission buses, trucks, off-road vehicles, and cars, and thereby create a safe, renewable, sustainable, non-petroleum-based energy. Is it possible to have an economic boom that is actually good for the environment? Of course it is. If we can dream it, we can build it. And thank you again to Senator DeLeon and your esteemed colleagues for the vision 
courage, commitment, and decisive actions needed to change our current course. Thank you. Now we have the Secretary Treasurer of the California Buildings and Construction Trades, that is Mr. Robbie Hunter. Robbie. Robbie. You know, people t speak about green energy and jobs. Let me tell you what those jobs look like. Uh, in Fresno, which ha has some of the highest unemployment in the state of California and a real lack of industry, several solar projects have been initiated. Uh, the Iron Worker Local, and I'm an Iron Worker, hired uh, 216 apprentices in the last four months. Of those 216 apprentices, 105 of them didn't have high school diplomas, and through the apprenticeship program, we'll get high school diplomas. These are real jobs in real depressed areas, and it's a real industry. The IBW in the same area hired 800 apprentices, the carpenters 400. And to show you what those faces look like, we have apprentices from the operating engineers and the carpenters here behind us today. Stick up your hands. So these are real jobs for real people, kids coming out of school. But we're not building cars here anymore to any extent. We're not making steel industry. We have to make our own. Climate change is dressed through these great initiatives uh, led by Pro Tem De Leon is the way forward. Thank you. Next, we have with us from my hometown back down south in Los Angeles, that is Marvin Kropke, local IBW, local number 11. Good afternoon. My name is Marvin Kropke, and I'm privileged to be the business manager of International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 11 in Los Angeles, one of the largest electrical construction locals in the country. I am, of course, here to do the same as each person here, and that is express our support for the Pro Tem's Renewable Energy Package. California is truly at a historic crossroad. Four years ago, we led the nation in moving to a 33% renewable portfolio standard, which created more than 300,000 green jobs for California workers. Once again, like four years ago, the utility industry is fighting not to just export jobs, but also the energy benefits out of California. The utility industry wants to use offsets and renewable energy credits. Ratepayers shouldn't be purchasing rainforests in Brazil or buying empty pieces of paper. Ratepayer funds should be used to create hundreds of thousands of good jobs in California that clean California's air. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with the pro tem on this issue. Thank you. And last but not least, we have the director of the California Conference of Carpenters, that is Mr. Danny Curtin. Danny. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem de Leon. That has a wonderful ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and all your colleagues. Uh, I have to think that the transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy is, if not the most profound, certainly one of the most pr profound challenges that face our generation. And I want to thank the leaders up here for tackling it head on. We have a heck of a record. We've really been leading the way in the country, and we're continuing to do so. And I congratulate, congratulate all of you. Uh, carpenters, building trades people have been building infrastructure, energy from time immemorial. When water wheels were the, the, the hot new item on the, on the uh, 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 environment uh, 2,000, 3,000 years ago, and by the way, it's still a pretty green technology, we've done the work, we bring the skill, and we want to continue to build the future with the vision being provided. I just want to one, say one word about the jobs. Yes, there's a lot of jobs in building these kinds of energy uh, programs, but it's also having a solid infrastructure of energy, water, transportation, education. By the way, we build all of those products that provide the jobs. And the jobs are not, I mean, we keep hearing about green jobs. You know, it's traditional jobs in a green economy. Uh, Senator Pavley talked about the automobile factory. Well, those are automobile workers, but the cars they're putting out are now producing 45, 50 miles a gallon. 
that makes them green. We could have a strong environmentally sensitive uh, timber industry, for instance, which was sustainable, renewable, it's a green product, and could help with our water conditions because of the way we handle our forest. These are green jobs. So I want to thank everybody up here for do bringing the vision to what we're doing and constantly remembering that part of going into the future is providing a decent job for average working people so that their children and grandchildren can be a part of the economy but also we need to solve the environmental problems that's the gift we leave hopefully we leave a strong economy with skilled workers coming up the ranks to help build that economy so we're looking forward to building the future and we're looking forward to the vision that you continue to create for that future thank you very much Okay, it's 2 o'clock right now. Uh, we'll start uh, for a little bit for some Q&A. Uh, again, we have a great uh, 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 list of uh, senators as well as the chair of utilities on the assembly side, plus <laughs> business and labor here. But uh, we'll start off with the Q&A. Yes, Chris. Uh, 